Hey there, <clears throat> hey there, everybody. This is Teva DRC. Welcome. We're trying to give a little bit of um, a little bit of freedom to think a different perspective. That's all. We're not trying to uh, take anybody's turf, take anybody's mem membership. We're not trying to undermine. We're not trying to control. We're not trying to, um, you know, displace or ruin anybody's good name in the miracle working power group or not. We're pro the body of Christ, but we're pro the humans. And the only thing here and there is the doctrine, the doctrines that produce, reproduce on the grassroots and up in real life dysfunction. There's nothing wrong with that. So we're not naysayers, but we're pro real humans who must endure that or else go through it or just have not been taught. And that means ourself, nobody's perfect. If I were to talk about the Messiah Christ, you know, Messiah Christ, he went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, and the Lord was with him. Because he went about doing good, the Lord was with him, he did not oppress anybody. He did not suppress, withstand, talk about, uh, manipulate, hide, con. He didn't have false authority. That's right. So false authority is one thing. When I look at who is true and who is false, even myself, nobody's perfect. You're not perfect. I look at objectively the only true prophet, office prophet, apostle, teacher, pastor, evangelist, and pastor was, still is, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So therefore, if we want to recommend what, how to figure out who's true and who's false, I just say study him. And the Bible says in Hebrews 1, 2, that in the, well, 1 and 2 of chapter 1, it says, in the former days, the Old Testament, God spoke to us through the prophets. He spoke to his people through the prophets, through diverse means. They were more unusual signs and wonders. Not everybody could hear the Lord from the inside. Not every, they had a few people called to go to the Lord. He would speak to them to give to the people. However, in Hebrews 1, 2, it says that these days God speaks to us through his son. So if we're going to think we're, you know, calling ourselves some kind of prophet or are responsible for having an office, we have to read how Jesus mentored, how he behaved, how he related. And that's the big issue. There's a difference between the heart of the Father, Creator God, the heart of the Father through Christ and his ministry and the rules the religious rules of phariseeism that is the biggest point the biggest talking point as it were so to go back and figure out what's what what's going on what is not what hasn't gone on what i'm doing what you're doing that may be affecting ruining god's good name or the peace of god you know knowing who jesus really is i would say go back in matthew mark luke and john the good news the gospel and read how Jesus acted and reacted in every relationship. So over here we're teaching art, abiding relationship theology. Deep inside each every human heart is art. Sometimes it's manipulative, cunning, dark art. Sometimes it's positive, giving, cheerful, and uh, light art, you know. So we have to watch out all the art going on. There's a lot of art going on. <laughs> so if we want to see the art, the abiding relationship theology of Jesus Christ the Messiah who went about doing good in ministry and privately and with his mother Mary and all the different kinds of humans that we want to just read plain old get out our Bible go online get your app out one day and read the real thing the kind you can flip through and read Matthew Mark Luke and John when Jesus was alive in ministry walking the earth talking to real people uh, walking around with people that were dirt poor, had been slaves, they were Romans, they were Pharisees, they were little kids, they were women, fallen women, fallen people, and all sorts of things. Subhuman treated people. And we want to see how he acted and reacted. That's it. Just say, all right, I'm going to see every relationship, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I'm going to watch how Jesus acted. And he reacted in each one, and I'm going to try to behave the same. That will take a lot of the false religion out. That will take a lot of the cunning out. You know, I'm talking to Christians on every ministry. We talk, we talk to the Christian, for the Christian, by the Christian. However, everyone else is welcome, valued, respected. You can listen. But we want to make sure we get the message to the Christian because... <laughs> You know, uh, if we don't, we are not the real deal. We're re misrepresenting the Christ, man. That's that's a failure, it really is. 
I believe in teaching things that will complement, that might correct, that will collaborate with the community of the Christian. Be they speaking in tongues or not, be they a minister or not, be they just got the call or not, be they're just curious. All colors, black, white, and brown. Everybody brings to the table of Jesus Christ community something different, something blessed if they're living the life, if they're really the true deal. So I'm going to you know, be on here and be teaching. We have our new Tavo Teaches Center out there in Fort Mill, but we do it around this networking. Um, um, in Acts 1717, 17, which is the middle verse of the New Testament, the middle verse. When I said, I said Lord, well, I thought, I'm going to go and I'm going to look up the middle verse of the New Testament. I didn't say, Lord, what is it? And then he told me, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, I thought it was like the Lord inspired that. So I thought, I'm just going to go see what it is. So I did Google it, and it was Acts 16, 16, and it said Apostle Paul, which is my mentor. He said he went about, Apostle Paul went to the synagogue and talked theology with the people who came in, and he went to the marketplace, and he talked with people, whoever came by, and I thought, that's me. That's really how I am. I never had any idea. So we love uh, servant leadership. We're trying to get everyone to on how to hear God that fits what you already know, who you already think you, you know, we all think we are something, I guess, and what you've come from, what you're, you know, concerned about, and when you're looking at the overall theology of the ministry of, you know, what's going on today, and we can give you some pointers, a perspective, but we won't control, we won't take you over, or take you, say, don't be in your movement. you got to hear for yourself, this is submitted sila, Submitted as sila. that means pause and think of it and see what God would say, reflect on it, make sure it's really God, make sure it's in the Bible, and then you only do what you you feel to do is right. You know, one of the uh, the famous uh, starters of the faith movement, word of faith movement, not, you know, people have taken these, one of the things I have a real issue with, the dysfunction today, the reviling of people, the name calling, the word, you know, prosperity teacher, and just like, that's just holier than thou, prosperity teacher, uh, listen, you got to go back to the original founders and say, how are they really? And then realize once they got sort of well known, people took on their teaching and really did evil, used it, got it wrong. They were off themselves and went, wow, with it. And that's one of them, just one. And yet nobody's perfect. You know, my daddy's another person. My father was unsung, grassroots Southern Baptist pastor. And I owe so much to him and my mother and my family for keeping me like a balanced theology, not being, uh, not being uh, really easily swayed, but really make sure it's in the Bible. And even though he was not perfect either, or me, myself, I realized everybody's got a call to do something that will contribute of value. He was a servant leader, patient, calm, tall, <laughs> and I just love that down-to-earth relatability, and that's what we're looking for here. I, I believe the the Acts 1717 Barista Fellowship realm, which is my favorite, is because of three things. You can't go now to bigger, you know, a lot of places in ministry unless they have the big boss control, they have the monitoring of people, they have the um, a lot of cultish fault religion, and things like that. So I like the fact that there is no, there is no, you know, it's very respectful and it's diverse. There are a lot of things I call it, for, you know, back in T Dallas when I was seeking truth. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I'm calling this the Barista Fellowship because I feel so much more at home. They're respectful. They're not reading my mind to my knowledge. <laughs> They're very diverse. They're not sizing me up. No. They don't count how many times I go to a barista fellowship. They never call me a barista fellowship hopper. <laughs> so we've had our thoughts on these things, and we relate to that. Because people need to go where they feel respected and valued, Christian or not. They need to be respected by basic human persons. That's all it is. So the level of, of rarity of just being able to go 
in a service that's officially announced as a service or a church or, or a community. We're trying to find that in and just sort of bring it back to some real life, foot on the ground, practical, what are we really doing here? And who in the world is really a Christian? And what is this religion? That was the other thing when I wrote my little blurb about our ministry, you know, how to help people. Our seven, you know, I said, one of the reasons I, I do not really like, when we're, we're glad to be in the barista fellowship realm, real life people where rubber meets the road, you know, whoever comes in, like Acts 17. It's because it's not so religious. It's just not so religious, and that is, even when I was a kid growing up, I had a very good, healthy role model of being a Christian for my parents behind the scenes and family. So I never didn't like Jesus. I just didn't like getting dressed up, you know. And my mom and dad picked their battles. I wasn't like a PK that was, you know, hating God, hating every, you know. But for some reason, I just like getting dressed up. I don't know why it's put pressure on me. Now, I don't mind it, but if it's everybody's looking to see what you're wearing, that bugs me. I'm not that. I really don't care because we're there for the Lord and to hear God and to know people. So when you get into the spirit of religion back days before, I go back to before before praise and praise and worship started, it was hymns. And my parents weren't sticklers, not fundamentalists. They were happy people. It was Mary. But when they started to have praise and worship, I went, ah, oh, that's really me, the Jesus people aren't. So I still identify with that. And uh, we can cross, you know, I can train both traditional and not, denominational and not. Of course, if you need counsel or wisdom or whatever to hear my heart. But I remember finding when I was on my own learning about God for myself, not my parents. You know, everybody has to have their own faith. And I remember just thinking the Jesus people, you know, I was at Virginia Beach before college when I met that the Lord like that. And then I went to college and it was getting more of that and then from then on. But I remember finding a book that really trained, set me free, that really confirmed my soul. <laughs> and back in the day, I don't know if I was 17, there was a book, a paperback book that came out and it said, how to be a Christian without being religious. And that was it. I thought, oh, that's exactly me. And for some reason it is. It really is. So we'd rather have you ornery. We'd rather have you mean. But don't come near me. <laughs> Stay at home if you're like that, if you go to church, because this is what, you know. But we can handle people. And, and people have real life differences and real life understand. We understand. But I think a lot of people just don't know how big it is if you're not, how to say this, I'm going to give wisdom counsel from experience, Luke firsthand wisdom with good theology, and I'm going to submit it as Sila. I won't accuse anybody. I won't fault find, but I have to tell you, there are things that are valid if you're not at the very top of your ministry, your church, your ministry, and you're not... When you're not surrounded by handlers, bodyguards, keepers, staff, you're out here with the doctrine and the fruit and the people that take the doctrine either are wonderful with it or are just dismal. This is the big, almost 50 years of study being immersed till now, and we're grateful for it. I would say I would not be here had I not been under all these different kinds of great preachers on TV, famous and not. We're pro them. The ones I would go that I recommend, that I've always thought were the best for me, are always respectful to all races and women. They're always seeing people as people like Paul, like I do. Paul said, I determined to know nothing about anybody except Christ and him, and Christ and him crucified. That means Paul didn't look or go around look with a scowl on his face in. Yeah, they're evil because they're not Christians. Yeah, they're evil because they don't go to church. Yeah, they're evil because they don't look like me and quote the Bible the way I think everybody should. No, 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 no. That's where we're at. <laughs> That's dysfunction. You got to know people. You got to really care. You got to really care for people. You got to really respect people because God made them as wonderful. They've had different stories that's how you see them not as a type not as a form not as one of your property yeah there's another member from a notch on my belt there's a member yeah we're over them now we gotta be no 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 
that's where we're at. So in closing, we can discuss that, we can reprove that, we can correct that, but we're not going to hang around with that. <laughs> we're going to come out where the wild things are because it's more respectful, not so religious, not so watching, not so critical, and so performance-based. As I say this, I know it you know, stirs it up because it's supposed to, it is, it rankles, it's supposed to, you know, somebody will just think, we agree completely with you, others will say, you know, how dare, but that's your choice, hey, we got our choices, you got yours, um, so if we go about where we are defying the new performance norm of America, we are, perf we are defying by knowing unusual scriptures that are valid that even Paul would have shared today, Define the plastic ministry of performance that accuses people by type, by look, from far off that will not speak to them, that is like a witchcraft, as in control. Any rebellion which is this, is as the sin of witchcraft, come to think of it, First Samuel 15, 23. So we have been behind the scenes, and we've been out in front, and I had my own ministry all these years. But when my daddy, when I was born, I was raised in ministry. I, I thought... I just love Jesus. That's all. I even wasn't passionate for him, but I did become passionate. And then on the other hand, when the movements came, and I was the um, Jesus people, let's say, then gets into the charismatic renewal. The charismatic renewal was part of it. And all the people started to get infused with it. It wasn't until later when the, like, I guess the Jim Baker age came in in the 80s that the more systemized stylized ministry started to come the talk show format and I was there also when the different TV ministries started and the magazines that advertised conferences I was there but I saw how it, I was affected being sort of raised maturely and you know mostly healthy I guess you'd say not perfect but I could see how people who never had gotten saved until they saw it on TV which is great everybody's equal you just got to know there is a difference of a perspective. So we want to help people overcome some of this toxicity and whatever this is, dysfunction, because I have scripture. God has given me scripture. Paul has given me scripture, which is for the last days, perilous times will come. God, the community of God, his people. And that would be 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, 1 Timothy 6, 5 from Paul himself. And he says, turn away, turn away, even if it's that kind of great ministry or little ministry down the street or people group where they're not even Christians or Christians. But see, you don't want to target people. You don't want to name and accuse people's names, especially famous names, especially local names, especially Christian names. You don't want to do that because that is the opposite of much, much of the Bible protocol, such as, are you on the same level? Are you rebuking an elder? Are you uncovering Noah's sins? Are you touching God's anointed, whether in the pews or up on stage? They're both places that get targeted both. Are you um, going to be labeled among the <laughs> dysfunctional yourself? All right, look at the scriptures. We're very concerned for the future of America in my opinion, from my perspective, cross body unity for the cult spirit in a lot of big ministries, not the non-believers. We're not talking to you. That's your issues, you know, over there. But I'm talking to, it says, let self-judgment begin in the houses of God. Let it. We must permit it and allow it and train that. We first check ourselves out. Let, permit judgment self judgment not self accusation evaluation is what it means in the houses of god that means the church the top church members the elders the leaders the lay and then in the private homes my opinion and i have to do that we're not going to go into it much but there are all scriptures in the old testament that confirm that second chronicles 7:14 and this it's like People are immune to this. People are like, oh yeah, that's just, you know, we're too busy, we're too important, we got too much honor, you know, we don't, there's no time, you know, that's just no faith. <laughs> it says, if and when, Second Chronicles 7.14, if, 
and whenever they want to do it, if they think they can carve out the time, of course, if it's important. <laughs> so you can do it and I can do it. If, says the Lord, if my people, my people, his people, not the foreign beliefs, no, not the other religions, if my true committed people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, take time apart, self-evaluate, self-reflect, and self-humble, if they are called by his name, they, uh, they seek my face, they turn from their wicked ways, whatever he tells you is wicked to you and him, you know, between you and him, and they seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Where is that being taught now? I don't think so. I think it's too palatial. It's too non-fun. Uh, it's too reality check. Because we got our fantasy. We got our entertainment, you know. Oh, we are the next greatest. So this is genuinely a giant big deal. So you don't have to do it. It's their choice. But I'd say you start where you are. I start where I am. Everybody start where they are. And God can do it in your corner where you are. There had been a song that was my nemesis a few years ago. It's a good song. It was a popular song. It says something like, I'm waiting for the world to change. You know, that famous secular song. And I had met somebody that was living like that. You know, that age group, younger age group. Uh, well, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting on the world to change. Oh, yeah, I keep waiting for the world to change. Oh, yeah, throw in the, oh, yeah, poor you, poor you. Let's get on it. You brighten the corner where you are. You work on where you are. I'll work on wire, and that's all we need. So let's go for it. This is Dr. T. Tavo DRC. If you need prayer, if you want wise counsel, if you're not, if you're not just playing around, if you are a leader, okay, and if you want to just chat theology, even discuss it, even like take a session of two or three times to be tutored in a you know theology, bounce stuff back and forth for three, two or three times, or even music theory, because and composing, because I'm a composer, and very creative ideas jumpstart. If you're not creative, this could be a person to just you know jumpstart you and get you going in that because I do can give ideas and hand them to you and you do them or not if you feel it see this is it we're not trying to we're communicating that we're here and what we're doing and that we're busy but we don't have time to just drum up you know waste our time we're not thinking of this we're thinking of what is God saying to do and we want to do that that's all we're doing but we will fit in divine appointment style different ones even mentoring and the way I do it is not I'm not going to be over you. I'm not going to be your mama. I'll be here like the picture is that I'm like a sunshine. You know, the sun in the middle of the planets and the planets are out. They're rotating around the sun somewhere, wherever they are in space, doing their thing. Another thing, it's like when I preach as an online minister, which we're doing it on land too, whenever. The picture is because so many people are trained, it's evil. It's evil because you're not under somebody, which is Paul, Galatians 1, 1 and 2 is this, another Paul thing. I'm not sent out by any one group or any one person. I and the brothers that are with me out in the field were for the body. This is for a Pauline type of ministry as a prototype. It is also if Paul were under one person or a group and he had special revelation for this kind of movement or his call, he was an apostle to the Gentiles, this is an apostle to the, a movement, then they would, they would micromanage him. They think they would censor him. They think they would buy him. That's what we understand. We have seen this and that's why we're here. God has told us, yet we go, here's how we do it. Everywhere I go, everywhere I do, I read the boundaries and I'm submitted to everybody in Ephesians 5.21, mutual submission in the fear of the Lord, which is first church. I already proved that. Paul's method, not to have one big I, all these little U's, uh-uh. That is the start of witchcraft, control, false religion, 
shepherding movement, uh, reading your minds, uh, keeping control, keeping watch, church hopping, accusation, all right, legalism, neo Phariseeism. So this way it's like, all right, I'm minding my business, but I'm here if you need me, and it's by divine appointment, make an appointment, I'll get, tell you what I think, you hear God on it, I'll pray for you, I'll cover your back in prayer. There is no covering in the New Testament. This is not covering. Paul did not show it. Jesus did not show it. People have come up with it somewhere. It's like part of the law of when people get together. They need to have order, but they need to do it their way. And we're not angry at that. We're just miffed at it. It is murderous because people are immature, untrained, do not even know anything about mature doctrine. And instead they're watching in all these little local areas, rural areas, regional areas, cosmopolitan areas. I've been around. And they're wondering who is she under? All the people as well. Who is, are they over? Who are they under? That's just life. It's, that's life. That's where Jezebel watching comes in. That's where witch watch. That's where the caste system comes in. We got it to speak on it. So there is freedom in Christ with mercy. We're not being playtime, goofy, non-structured, lascivious, using people. No, we're not doing that. We're letting you know if you understand this, that you really get it, you understand it, there is dysfunction, then we will be glad to talk with you or <laughs> give you someone that, you under that understands you back. But like I said, I do not believe in being covered, yet I do believe in being accountable, and that you can have certain ones, I call it parachute covering, since the 80s, when I saw all this start to evolve in the 90s. Parachute covering means people who are there watching your back, but not smothering you, controlling you, owning you, all right? You have enough, let's say five, like an umbrella or a parachute, you know, parachute has the folk, you get enough people that are the right people. Even if one goes nuts on you, controlling or goofy, you got you still got enough prayer. So, so I believe that we've just been looking. We just need more people like that that are safe, mature. And I I've had boards in the past. I was under somebody's nonprofit when I and they were fine. But then life. You know, this doctrine of control and submission has just got, and this dysfunction in Christian ministry alone, the targeting, the poor me authority, and the false authority, the false teaching is enormous. All right, Judas. So this is why we're here teaching freedom from Christ, freedom from religion, <laughs> pro the body, and then say we're against carnality in the Christian ministry. But we're also saying we understand a lot of people have never been taught and they're dysfunctional from their family and that's not their fault. It's their testimony. I have a testimony, you have a testimony. We could work together and get it all evened out in the community, Ephesians 4, walking it out in meekness and lowliness and long suffering, endeavoring to keep the bonds of peace together with education. But if I walk into a lot, <laughs> if I as a typecast, nobody knows your name, unsung, which is fine, I go in as a form or whatever this is, a diverse person by my energy and DNA, which I'm very diverse. I go in as a non-celebrity in this form. Oh my gosh. It is so dysfunctional that you trigger, they have no reality of real life people. They trigger false religion. It triggers sins by, it triggers typecasting, but also respect her persons. It triggers anti-mother in Christ, gender, age, could be physical weight, whatever it is. But I believe a lot of it is, I have a new move on me and they've never met anybody like this. They've never had any theology that understands it. So therefore we're teaching some brand new options in ministry for anybody. It's not about herself, it's for Jesus move. I will say it again, this group that's so rough, is like Jezebel and Ahab, weak Ahab, too weak to confront, using false religion instead to read you and pray against you. It's so much like the bu big bunch of Ahab and weak Ahab and Jezebel, false religion, demonic control, 
and their network of 850 just like them, all coming against one prophet Elijah who only wanted God's move for the nation. They want their turf. This is it, exactly. So when you're dealing with that, you either <laughs> perish or you get skilled to deal with it. <laughs> Forgive them, but I mean, gosh. Now it's time to, you know, the Bible teaches me, and this is why I teach like this. The Bible says, you know, Revelation 2, Church of Thyatira, to the top leader, the apostle over the lampstand. He says, why do you tolerate that Jezebel? Witchcraft. False authority. A whole move of it. Tons. Right? I said, well, I don't, Lord. I don't tolerate that. That's why I confront it. That's why I confronted. If I have anybody out there that has ever heard any charismatic, prophetic, ever say anything about any unclean thing, unsubmissive thing, uh, any type of demonic thing, problematic thing, let them say it. Have any of them or you ever taken time to Matthew 18, 15, confront me in an apostolic ministry? or any kind of ministry. Have you ever asked me about anything that I have theology? No, that's what I'm telling you now, all this stuff. That's what I don't trust. I do not trust these people. That kind. Have you ever, Galatians 6, 1, like Paul said, submitted to God's whole counsel, the second one, there's Revelation, confront, if you think it's a Jezebel, Revelation 2, the head leader, not talk about them, not pray against them, not say, I've got one, put them on the list, like they do. these do it targeting faults so I'm, I know my scripture <laughs> they may be an expert I mean you know God must need it he showed it to me so many times to let me understand how big it is witchcraft Wiccan twisted authority Wicca Wiccan witchcraft all right in Christian ministry so we have three apostolic commands apostolic Bible teachings that Jesus left in place when he went on earth about this Instead of spying, instead of resenting, instead of praying against, rumoring about, you are to get off your couch. And Matthew 18, 15, one to one privately confront. If you're scared, they're that tough, which some might be. Take somebody with you, but they too must respectfully, privately confront. Paul says to the Galatians who were back under Wiccan false authority, he said, who beguiled you and put you back under, who bewitched you, Galatian leadership, into the law. Paul said to them in, a fee, in Galatians 6, 1, leader, you are to meekly go and make a private, behind the scenes, firm appointment and correct them. And do it meekly and humbly in case the same sin comes back upon you all right then we have the big one for me as the head of the movement <laughs> as the head of the, the apostle over the lampstand for Jesus his lampstand and that is uh, Revelation 2 Church of Thyatira why do you tolerate that Jezebel it ain't the Jezebel that God was after that the Holy Spirit targeted and mentioned your you know he targeted the pastor for being weak morally weak weak wuss and so he said why do you tolerate the Jezebel that means you are to Matthew 18 15 implying Galatians 6 1 implying and if somebody is that scary take one or two with you we're also respectful not biased not dominating and not afraid and you make an appointment and correct them and set them down if I had never as a Baptist, as a white Baptist, as a Jesus person, as a servant leader, ever known, I think of said, have to teach on such weird stuff, weird control. It's weird control. It is false doctrine, false authority, and rebellion to God's whole counsel, which is the sin of witchcraft, artful dodging, artful manipulation, artful. They have a dark heart <laughs> to control. Whether they have smiles on their, whether they'll, you know, I think a lot of people are well-meaning. They just were raised so badly. They're mentored by people from the mountain woods of Jezebel Spine 101. 
the Mountain, Mountain Williams School of Theology. <laughs> so we're here to help you, but we'll be training online. We have our team at University, our Tavo Teaching Center and Resource Center, and we'll be helping people get rid of the country law and forgive everybody, but also to keep on going. And then the last part I always say, no matter how big I've described this crowd, the Jezebel have their faith renewed. We're going to see them. We're going to, you know, expo we throw the Jezebel more than the Lord Jesus and the cross. They really do. They really do. They, they're looking harder for Jezebels and witches in the audience than they do Jesus suffering on the cross. They, it's minimum, if you ever hear it from this grace. So, they're, um, excuse me, that's what it is. We're correcting it. Because that is, that's false religion. It is. It's scripture. Isaiah 118 is my bottom script, you know, the, I wanted to end on, but I'm going to teach on this one. Isaiah 8, 118 says, for all of us now, and I mean it for all these people, all these diverse people, all these wannabe people, all these toxic, you know, all different kinds of fruit on people. All right, come let us reason together, though our sins be as scarlet, he will wash them white as snow. That means come, you relate, come, let's talk about it, okay? It isn't like we're spying you afar that's easier on me if i throw the book at you the bible make a video about you and put your name up there and think yeah there's no way out of it. uh uh come humility relationship diversity come let us reason together though your sins be as scarlet he will wash them white as snow i said this the other day that it came to me i would throw this out there and then run to the last scripture do you realize that if you read the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, the infamous sins that Bible preachers preach and throw, the, you know, they do all this stuff with that one topic. <laughs> Isaiah, excuse me, Galatia, uh, Genesis 18 and 19 is the big topic of the whole story of the Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, do you realize that even though that is there, that there is Isaiah 118 after it says, come. Let us reason together, though your sins be as scarlet, he will wash them white as snow. Whoa. Think on that theology in these days. All right. Last, I'll say, if you're going down your list of who is true, who is false, in all the prophets and speakers and talking heads, include myself, then I would say, let's all look around including yourself, for the people who would, are named to be Psalm 144, the strange children. This is the subculture that I discovered, that taught me all, that, you know, that God reminded me needs to be addressed. Psalm 144 by King David, who said, Beware of the strange children, keep your children away from the strange children, you will not prosper if you, are you, you know, interact with the strange children, and that is very true. <laughs> All right, and it says for our two departing verses, our closing verses are Psalm 144, verses 7 and 11, like the store, 7 and 11. They're the same thing. Beware of the, beware of the strange children. Now, these could be family members. These could be, but I'm talking churches. It could be secular, but I'm talking to the church, not the others. They have mouths that speak vanity and a right hand of falsehood. That's how you first, that goes in, I think, with going along with discerning who and true, who's a true and false teacher, pastor, prophet, and so forth. And their people. How are the people doing? Because they take after the top people, usually. It says, Psalm 144. They have mouths that speak vanity. They may be pretty, they may be happy, they may be positive, they may be black, they may be white, they may be brown, they may be energized, they may be low-key and whatever. But they're speaking vanity. Vanity, bottom line, things that will not line up with eternity, getting you to eternity. And when you are on the final day, you'll stand there and you think, uh-oh, I didn't even get to eternity. Or, I blew it. I was a demas. I love the things of this world more in the temporal world. I wanted my perks, power, position, money, fun, club. This is sober. Needs to be taught. Secondly, it says they have the right hand of falsehood. Falsehood. The right hand is government, authority in the Bible, leadership. 
the right hand of falsehood. I would dare to say and submit this means false authority with false teaching, false priority, with no knowledge of real scripture, no treatment of fair treatment of kindness of humanity. It could be like Jezebel and Ahab taking, you know, wanting their turf, you know, setting up all this big stuff, employing people and all this governmental power and supernatural and, you know, all this will to orchestrate their turf. But they really don't want but their kind, the biased. So I would remind people who are dealing with false authority in our country, in the Christian ministry, that there is one verse that ties in that should be taught with this. That is Matthew 7, 21, 23, Jesus Christ, the Master, the Messiah, who said this, to the Christian, to the minister, basically, basically, to the Book of Acts crowd. He says, on the last day, when it's too late, no, no repent, no, you can't make amends, can't, can't change. When it's too late, and you'll be there by yourself. He'll say, many of you will say, Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I cast out devils in your name? Didn't I do signs and wonders in your name? And he will say, out for me, depart. I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. Lawlessness is also translated as iniquity. It translates also in Strong's Bible Concordance as false authority. You who use false authority, hiding, ducking, avoiding, suppressing, oppressing, using, targeting and never confronting, leadership domination, leadership totalitarianism, leadership, uh, what do you call this, um, cov, cov, uh, cult like good old boyism. Uh, the good old boyism or the, what is the movement, the patriarchy, uh, good old, you know, the boys club, it's like a cult spirit. It can be Phariseeism, but it's money. Another one is putting pressure on money, people for money. Uh, Isaiah, excuse me, 1 Samuel 1 and 9 is a great example of people that are giant people. Eli and his two sons who used and slept with the women, used their power, mesmerized, uh, put pressure on or was sly to seduce or whatever they did. Impressed with their persona, their big name and ego. Uh, a lot of this stuff is charismatic. A lot of it is not. But listen, there's more than meets the eye. It's a culture I've dealt with. It's a culture I've had to interact with. It's a culture that is not going away unless somebody repents and teaches and forgives. So we're here if you want to chat, if you're curious about, you know, am I really under the right, doing the right thing? What's the difference between the way I've sought it? And, and if you're right, you'll be right. That's fine. We just want to come let us reason together. That's all. We're just trying to get rid of false religion because in Eight years ago, ten years ago in Dallas, I saw how big this is. The culture and the cult. And the power it holds over the book of Acts, like it owns it. And America is influenced, connected with it. And the Lord told me, it's like Isaiah 1 through, 8, 1 through 10, that God was there in verse chapter 10, waiting on his leaders to repent because they were blocking his Holy Spirit move, which would make, quote, their necks so fat with God's Holy Spirit yoke-breaking anointing that no fierce Assyrian crowd could take them over. However, in verses 1 through 10, it was God's leaders, the prophet said of the nation, it was God's leaders, not the other face, but God's leaders that had little g-gods, false religion, and vanity. And that power, that cultish type thing, the blindness, was manifesting in Isaiah 520, a woe, which said, woe, you call good evil and evil good. You call playtime and fancy dancy thinking and Demas getting all you can. As someone said, another preacher quoted another preacher and he said, the American way is get all you can, can all you get, and then sit on your can. It's the culture. So we're talking famous. We're talking weakness. We're talking sure, yeah, sure, everybody done it. 
No, you're talking to the Lord by yourself. That's what you need to do. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, he will wash them white as snow. But you got to do it, and i got to do it. God bless. Bye-bye.